Hello and happy day. I'm Josh Moffins, a.k.a. Mr. Pika Guam. I just want to welcome you all to our uh, show this evening. We're making Pek Dizu. And what Pek Dizu is, is it's a, um, a dish that we cook with coconut milk and fish uh, and a lot of vegetables or gulai. So, real fast before we start this show, I just want to thank everybody who has continued to support our effort here to preserve our Chamorro culture and our cooking and to continue to show, you know, the the interest into what we're all about and you know that makes me feel and very very proud of of what you know we're doing here and so thank you very much again uh, so tonight uh, there we're doing two kinds of fish uh, we're gonna cook the fish in two different ways however it's gonna do one sauce over it so um, we're gonna start by introducing you to what we're using for our vegetables and um, all the other additives into this video so this evening I'm gonna show you here um, we have here bonita or tuna fish that we're using and tilapia. Now when you cook tegizu, you know, just like in, when you cook uh, escabeche, you use sort of uh, an assorted, uh, assortment of fishes or fish and that's why I'm using two different kinds of fish. However, here in Cali, we have a lack of, of a lot of the you know, indigenous fish that we have in Guam given that we're from the Marianas Trench, you know that it's, it's very assorted in Guam. But this is what I can come up with tonight, and this is what we're going to use. We have bonita or tuna fish with the red, red meat, and we're using tilapia here. So that's our assortment of fish. We also have um, Japanese eggplant, which is also um, known as uh, uh, bilingenas in Chamorro. And we have cabbage here. And we have um, a, very, a local favorite, which is called watercrust in English, or yam leaf, but it's actually um, tankung. And we're also using cherry tomatoes, latin nizu, or um, coconut milk, triolis, or green beans, cebollas, or onions, ginger, not galanga, and garlic. And um, if we move on over here to look at what we have going on in our, um, you know, oven, we have here a, a very Chamorro concoction here. This is what I'm going to use to steam the portion of the fish that I'm going to steam because um, we have some high cholesterol people that are going to be eating this food. So I want to make sure that, you know, these people are accommodated as well. Um, and so let's start with this. Um, I'm going to hold on, I here, wash my hands. And I'm going to begin to steam the portion of the fish that we're going to use for the katbizu. So you want to keep your fish intact and basically lay it out in the steaming concoction here. I'm going to do half that. And what have you done here exactly, Josh? With the um, walk what I've done out? basically is I've taken a huge walk, right? And let me get, grab a uh, couple of mittens here. I've taken a huge walk, right? And this is going to be like your, your <laughs> I'm improvising here. I don't have a huge steamer, and I really don't even know what one looks like or where to buy one. So to steam it, what I'm doing is I'm using a huge wok. I put a little bit of water in the um, bottom portion of the wok, and then I turned um, the lid of another pot over so that I can get that steaming you know, sensation going on. And as you can see, there's a little bit of, uh, of room around the perimeter of the pot, which is allowing for the steam to come up from the boiling water. Now, in order for it to steam properly, you're going to have to cover it. But let me put my uh, tilapia pieces here. And um, I'm basically accommodating both, um, both uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but for both people. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sear some. I'm going to lower this. Or actually turn it off. In English, lots of freaking food. Yeah, lots of freaking food. <laughs> and, and as you can see, I, I kind of like over warm this oil here. So I'm actually turning it off so it can cool off. If you ever do so and it starts smoking like that, you never want to throw something in right away or else it's going to burn right away. And so I'm going to hold off on that for now. But for now, or as of now, I'm going to um, call it clear and safe that I can actually cover up here my... Um, Bonita or tuna and my tilapia to go ahead and, and start the steaming process.
Now this will continue to cook. I'm only going to leave it in here for about 20 minutes. That way, you know, I'm not cooking it to, you know, where it's going to be overcooked or hard. I want it to just be basically the same way that it's going to come out from what I'm doing here with the oil. And I'm basically going to sear the fish that way it's not coming out, you know, hard or whatever. So when you sear fish or any kind, any kind of meat, you want to make sure that the, the innermost part of the meat is still, when you, when you cut a fish in half, you know, the inside is still kind of pink or uncooked. And the reason for that being is that um, I'm searing it because I, I'm going to lace this uh, dish with a topping, which is going to be sort of like a cut do or a, a soup. Um, not necessarily like a soup as, as in soup, but a juicy um, glaze that's going to cook the rest of it, and that way it's still soft. So um, I'm going to start um, searing my, my fish. And beware, even though I have turned it off and it's, it's still smoking, John, um, would you mind standing back towards this way? Because I don't want you to get popped. And that's why I have here in preparation for this, I have my pot here going. I'm going to actually cover it. I'm going to teach you guys how to not burn yourself. I will remove the cover once I have um, put in that's the amount of fish. So it seems pretty safe now. And so since it's not like flying like crazy, I'm going to return this to the hive. Remove the um, cover here. And here we go. Hold this <laughs> down. Now the reason why I'm throwing in the tuna is because it's obviously thicker than the tilapia. And what makes the pop is basically the, the liquid that's dripping out of the fish. So I know now that it has settled and the popping is going to be very minor. So I'm going to actually look for the spatula because you don't want to break up the fish. I'm going to have one in here. Let me cover this right now with my tomorrow and pop some cover. Back Thank you, John. So as you see, I have here my my tuna cooking. Now it is flashy and, and you know you might call it dangerous. But I'm gonna flip it on top of the next fish. You want to like prevent as much flash as possible. Flip it on top of the fish. That way you're not like flipping it into the oil again. And take it from the bottom. Put it down. Okay. Now see how fast that was, we're halfway done here. Once it's ready to be flipped on the other side, we'll be ready to go and, and pull it through to remove the fish from the frying oil. Let me cover this for, you know, just a few seconds. I'm going to turn it off. You don't want to cook it too much. I'm going to check on my steaming fish. It's going to take a little longer, but as you can see, it's starting to brown. See that? It's starting to brown really quickly. Now, as I have my fish cooking here, and since it's not flashing like crazy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my ginger. So, really quickly, um, in this part of the video, I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing here. Throwing in the ginger. You want it to cook into the oil with the fish. And in part two of this video, you will see what I do with um, the rest of the process and how we're going to um, infuse these vegetables today. Thank you.